Hello, I'm Karen from Essex Wildlife Trust and I'm here today to show one of my passions. I absolutely love them. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that people watching this will either love them like I do or hate them. Quick warning, today's video is about spiders. Now, I love them. I think they're fascinating. They're adaptable. You find them in most habitats around the world. They survive in our homes and alongside us, where most, a lot of wildlife doesn't. Um, and they're fascinating. They're fascinating life stories. And some of them are incredibly beautiful when you look at them close up. This morning, I am going to show you the one that I've got here in my pot. Now, I wanted to start by just talking about what makes a spider a spider. Now, most people will know that a spider has eight legs. So it belongs to the group of arthropods, which includes insects and crustaceans, such as crabs. But it's in its own group within the arthropods of arachnids. Now, arachnids includes the spiders, harvestmen, uh, scorpions and pseudoscorpions, and ticks and mites. Now, some of them also have eight legs. The thing that tells you this is a true spider is its body is separated into a head part and an abdomen at the back. And quite often it's the abdomen that can be quite large that maybe makes people a little bit scared of them. Did you know as well as eight legs they also have, in most species, eight eyes and they're arranged in two rows before one above the other. Some spiders only have six, in which case two of those are missing. And they use eyesight to different degrees. So some spiders, like the jumping spider, will use eyesight quite a lot to judge the distance from its prey. So it doesn't catch them in a web, it just jumps at them. And it can jump 14 times its body length. Amazing. So they use sight quite a lot. Other spiders will, you'll have noticed, might have little hairs on their legs and they're using those for feeling their surroundings, sensing vibrations so they can tell what's around them through their sense of touch. But they also use pheromones, they use scent, particularly between males and females. So they're amazing sensory adaptations of the structure and of course their webs are fascinating. So today I'd like to share with you some of the spiders that I've found here out on the nature reserve. Have a look at some of the webs and find out a little bit more about their amazing life cycles. So I can show you that spiders are fascinating, not fearsome. So let's get to know a spider a little bit better. Now we know that they've got eight legs and eight eyes. Can you see the little feelers at the front of her head here? These are called the palps, and this helps you tell your girls and your boys apart. So this spider has got palps that are the same thickness the whole way down. So she's a female. I also know that because I found her on the nursery web nest. If it was a male, they're usually slightly smaller, and his palps would have sort of blobs on the end, a bit like little boxing gloves. They are different shapes in different types of spider. So that's how you tell your girls and your boys. And he uses those little blobs when he's approaching the female to mate. So this is the traditional spider web that most people think of. This is an orb web, so a typical circle shape. Ah, there's a little garden spider sitting in the middle, waiting for some food to be caught in the web. Now she'll have spun this overnight so that it's ready to catch insects during the day. She starts with the strong radial lines, the long lines that join onto the vegetation. And then she'll work round on the inside to create a sticky spiral. It will trap flies and other little flying insects that pass through. And when they get caught, she'll use another kind of silk to wrap them up. Holds them still um, and she'll bite them and inject a venom that paralyses them. 
Now this is the slightly gruesome bit. Spiders don't digest their food in their stomachs like we do. They produce a digestive juice that they put onto the creature. It digests them and then they slurp up the digested fly. A bit gruesome but quite fascinating. And not all webs are the traditional round orb web shape. This web has a sheet across the entrance and then a little tunnel at the back. And this is home to one of our house spider species, Tegenaria. These are the ones that give you a start when they scuttle across your living room floor. Which is usually later on in the summer or into the autumn. And those house spiders that you see scurrying across the floor are usually males in search of a female. The female has a slightly chunkier body and she just sits and waits for the male to come to her. Now although this is a house spider web it is actually outside on some old brickwork and especially during the summer when the weather's fine they're perfectly happy outdoors looking for their prey. What a fab web! Some spiders have amazing family stories. This is the web of a nursery web spider. She's just down on the stalk but she's very hard to see. And as the name suggests, this is a nursery for her spiderlings. So when she laid her eggs, she wrapped them in silk and she carried them around underneath her body. And then just before they were ready to hatch, she built this umbrella shaped web in the long grass and popped her egg sac under there. So when the spiderlings hatch, they're clustered together in there for the first little while before they disperse. Just at the bottom of that web are hundreds of tiny spiderlings. And the female is there guarding her web and her spiderlings from predators and from some of the insects that would like to parasitize them. There are some wasps that will actually lay their eggs in the spiderlings and then the larvae will feed on them as they develop. So that nursery web spider is doing a great job. She's a great spider mum. And some webs are just a tangle of threads and this compost heap is almost covered with spider threads. And these tangle webs are good because they catch insects falling from the tree above, land in the sheet, and then the spider can come out and scoop up his dinner. And there's a real feast of bugs in the compost heap, so this is an excellent spot for the spider to make his web. Now this little fella also has eight legs, just like a spider, but he's not a true spider. He's a harvestman. And you can tell the difference by looking at his body. Oh, he's coming up to say hello. Uh, harvestmen have one body part all joined together rather than a separate head and body. And as the name suggests, they're quite often found in long grass in amongst the harvest. And they don't make a web to catch their feed. They rely on their long legs to chase it and then grab it. Oh, he's coming up to say hello. And away he goes. Well, thank you for joining me to look at spiders today. I hope that maybe I've been able to change your mind that spiders are amazing, versatile, and of course, incredibly useful creatures. Whatever you feel about them yourselves, it's important that we spread the message that spiders and all other wildlife are important to our ecosystem and that we should respect them and the wildlife all around us. Whether you see a spider today or not, stay safe, stay wild.